Okay, guys, we're specifically going to talk now about hypovolemic shock. So in hypovolemic shock, the initial insult or the reason the organs aren't receiving oxygen is low blood volume. Now, this could be because of some sort of traumatic injury or a hemorrhage. It could also be due to severe dehydration or even burns can cause a loss of that circulating volume. Click the link below or visit nursing.com slash NFN for a free NCLEX ebook covering the 77 key topics. So if this is our circulatory system that you're looking at here, and if this tank is our total blood volume, you'll see that the tank is low. So what happens is that the blood that is supposed to enter and fill the heart is decreased. And so if you remember the blood that enters and fills the heart, that's called preload. So we decrease our preload because the volume's just not there. When our preload decreases, our stroke volume is going to decrease because there's just not as much volume, and that makes our cardiac output decrease. So our body then has mechanisms it tries to use to compensate for that low cardiac output. So you'll see a lot of vasoconstriction out here because the vessels are trying to shunt and pull that blood back towards the heart. So that means that the pressure our heart has to pump against is increased because of the vasoconstriction. So that will be our SVR is our afterload that increases our afterload. Okay. But it also means that the blood is actually shunted away from the non-vital organs into the vital organs. And so we see things like um, our skin becomes pale or cold because that blood flow is being shunted away from the skin. And then of course the heart rate is our other compensatory mechanism. So the heart rate is going to increase and it's going to try to compensate for that cardiac output. The problem is after a while, the body can only compensate for so long. So eventually we're really going to start see, seeing our blood pressure decrease as those compensatory mechanisms fail because ultimately there's just not enough circulating volume to serve the whole system. So what's the treatment plan for a patient in hypovolemic shock? Well, we always want to treat the cause, whatever it was. But either way, we need to replace the volume um, that they lost. This may be crystalloids like LR or normal saline, or it could be colloids like uh, red blood cells or albumin. Just depends on the problem. Now, sometimes we can't replace fluids fast enough to support their blood pressure, so we may need to support their hemodynamics and give them things like vasopressors while we work on replacing the volume. But it's really important to remember, you know, vasopressors are going to constrict those blood vessels, but squeezing the tank, so to speak, does nothing if it's empty. So we always start filling the tank first, then we'll give them vasopressors. And then also, since these patients are at risk for that decreased LOC, they may have issues protecting their airway and they might need to go on to life support and be intubated. So we need to keep a close eye on their level of consciousness and their ability to protect their airway, depending on the situation. If you need more help breaking down complex topics like this one, make sure to head over to nursing.com slash NFN, click the link in the description below, or scan the QR code to unlock your free NCLEX review that covers 77 must-know nursing topics. Make sure that you learn this, that we love you guys. Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.